Well guys, it's been a long week. It's late at night, it's time to go home. We always do these late at night. We're gonna do a little story time. We're gonna go a little bit behind the brand, behind the brand, behind the brand. We're gonna talk a little bit about this and what came after that. So before you lay your head down to sleep tonight, grab your Rancho de Luna. Dave, trying to get, a, get another couple bottles from you. Or if you're not into Mezcal, king of the skate parks, I lost a beer. Yeah, I know, I don't drink alcohol, but it's time for a little story. Come on in. So, you guys, you made it past the first 30 seconds. I've got these guys telling me, Daniel, how, how long are these guys typically watching our videos? 30 seconds? That's where you guys watch the first 30 seconds and it drops off. So if you're watching this, you've made it past the first 30 seconds. Thank you. So you guys might be interested about some old school BMX. You might want to know something. I think we're going to tell you a little something today. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the way that these two frames evolved out of a couple of kids riding some bikes, having some fun, playing in the dirt, and how it turned into a BMX company and a brand. Comment if you made it this far. I don't know if you made it this far. I'm trying to make this interactive. I can't see you guys, but you guys can see me. If you guys have tuned in before, you saw the video where Eddie Fiola and I, this is the first frame that I did. I was 12, 13 years old. And if you notice- Yeah, I'm looking at got, the welds. Well, yeah, they're pretty shitty. Uh, but I've held on to it all yeah. this time. So we talked about this frame and we talked about how I ended up building this frame because I kept breaking my others and how a great man, Ray Elliott, helped me learn to miter, learn to weld, and how this frame is built using a Laguna tandem bottom bracket, a Laguna tandem head tube, some hand cut chromoly dropouts, and how it was a really cool frame. Well, where did we go from there? We ended up going into this frame, and this frame was gonna become a brand. This frame was when me and a couple of my friends were riding, and we decided, hey, let's do this. I had a pretty decent connection with VDC. Thank you, Randy Rizzo, for getting me in the door over there. And Voris was very kind. And Voris let us hang out at the shop. And Voris let me get this frame built. So this frame was the original prototype of our high-tech long frame. So with this frame, it was the evolution of the white frame I just showed you. And we decided at this point we were gonna turn it into a brand. One of my good riding buddies back then, Jimmy Foreman, put a little picture up here. He was my go-to riding buddy back then. We would go hit up all the local riding spots. We would go to all the tracks. We'd ride over to Westminster. We'd ride over to La Mirada. We'd, you know, go out to Orange Y. We'd you know, hit up the strawberry fields. We'd, we'd go everywhere. We decide that, you know, I should start a frame company. Hey guys, so if you're down at Dirty Fest, you saw the factory team wearing these new retro jerseys that we did, you know, kind of cool ones like what Ray Luscombe had, you know, back in the day, but some cool black sleeves. This was special for Dirty Fest, Dirty Fest edition. So we weren't gonna sell these. These were just for team issue, team riders only. But everybody's been kind of going, hey, we really want one of these. And Mike Miranda was like, hey, Bill, you know what would be kind of cool? We can do a limited edition run. We can put the Dirty Fest logo on it. So it'd be a commemorative. It'd be a special commemorative only from Dirty Fest. And you can get it with your name on it and get your number on it. So Cyber Horse, down here in Southern California, we're gonna do a limited edition run for 30 days. You can order your jersey, get your name, your number, your retro jersey, but you gotta get it. You gotta get it quick, cause once they're gone, they're gone.
you know, I should start a frame company. I was working at SC at the time, sweeping floors, stickering frames, and I thought that, yeah, I can do this. I had learned enough stuff. I wasn't even able to drive yet. This is back 81, 82 is when we were trying to really get this going. We had to rely on his brother, Don, to drive us around everywhere and his little Volkswagen bug, and that was pretty cool. And then Jimmy's dad picked up a 944 Porsche. That was pretty cool. That was badass, but it was cool. So we decided that we were gonna build this frame. 100% 4130 chromoly, oversized down tube, oversized top tube. We had the pierced seat mass. Now this, we took over from the white frame that we had done. Now, a lot of people said that we did this copying a GT. There is some of that in it. I was looking more along the lines of the JMC stuff. Guys that we used to ride with had a JMC. I always thought that was cool. GTs were on the come up. I always thought it was pretty rad. I wasn't a huge fan of the way that everything looped through, but I did like the idea of the piercing because I figured it was stronger. And Voris Dixon, if you know anything about the way VDCs were built, he did piercings everywhere. His frames, the Changas, the Gorillas, pierced head tubes, pierced seat masts. If he could pierce it, he was gonna pierce it. What we ended up doing is we took the seat stays, brought them up more on the sides, did that, we had built-on cable guides, no more rattling of your cable. And if you notice here, we had a built-in seat, seat post clamp. Now, we did this, of course, again, copying a JMC. Now, it broke off quickly. I think we got to use it three or four times, loosening, tightening, loosening, tightening, and boom, pops off. Part of using thin wall chrome ollie. It, it just didn't want to work right. Everything back then, old school BMX tolerances were not what the tolerances are today. This one didn't have our ringed head tube that we do on all of the Supercross frames, and it didn't have the machined head tube like we did on the original white one. But this is where it went. And we ended up building 25 of these in chrome. Jimmy got the first chrome one. This is what we were gonna start a company off with. There's a couple reasons why it didn't turn into a company. Uh, when I showed up at Orange one time, Scott was there and Scott saw it and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm gonna start my own frame company. And he's like, ah, oh, I was gonna sponsor you. I was gonna put you on the team. I was gonna give you a quad angle. Oh man, okay. We also found out there was another company that was gonna use the high tech name and they called me up and here I am a young kid and they threatened to sue and we just kind of put the whole project behind us. At that point, when we decided not to do the frame, uh, I've told the story to a few people. And at Dirty Fest a couple weeks ago, I got to sit down with Will Skirto and tell Will Skirto about it. And he was like, yep, I remember that. Voris gave the design to Pronec, National Pro, and they took this frame and added in a little tube gusset and it turned into the National Pro. They went out and sold hundreds, maybe thousands of those frames. Put Kevin McNeil on them, Sean Texas on them, and it was really cool to actually sit down in our Supercross pit at Dirty Fest and talk with Will Skirto about it, and it was actually a really neat conversation. And Will was like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, Will, I'm not mad at you, man. Um, I'm not mad at all. You know, I wasn't gonna make the frames. Uh, I was a kid, I was a young kid. I didn't know what I was doing, I was trying but I didn't know. And Robert Cardoza came over and he was talking about, and it was kind of funny that Robert remembered when we were doing it and how I showed up at Ascot with it. And Robert was like, oh man, Bill, those things were gonna be awesome. And it's kind of funny to think, you know, what could have been with this frame? You know, that was 40 years ago, 40 years ago. Well, I didn't tell anybody there, but I went ahead and built this the other day. So for the 40 year, anniversary, I was going to do a limited run of some high-tech frames. I recreated the old logo that we had done, the decals, but I did it in a more modern version. So it's got a campy integrated head tube. We put the built-in seat post clamp. We've still got the piercing. We've got everything coming up. We put cantilever mounts on it, Euro bottom bracket. And I figured for our 40-year anniversary, you know, we were going to do this a year ago, but we're gonna build 40 of these. Put them out there, 
try and replicate what could have been just for a little bit of fun and some history's sake. We've gone ahead, done some pads, just to do something cool. Jimmy doesn't know it yet, but I found out yesterday that he's been watching the videos. Hey Jimmy, the first one that we're doing, I'm sending it to him. We just got it back from Chrome. Everybody knows chromine's been a pain in the butt right now and it's taken a long time, but uh, it's on the way to Jimmy. Jimmy has actually done something cool to where Jimmy's father passed away and he ended up leaving the Porsche that he used to drive Jimmy and us around in to Jimmy. And uh, Jimmy has honored me by saying that uh, he's gonna pass that on to us and uh, Jimmy's more of a, a muscle car kind of guy and he knows I'm into the European cars. So he said that he thought his dad would think that I would want it more than Jimmy did. So it's kind of a cool, cool little thing of bringing BMX friendship and BMX history together. BMX is more about your friends and the camaraderie that everybody gets out of just hanging out on these two wheels, you know? I've said it before, it's your bike, your friends, some dirt. And, and the main thing is, it, it truly is your friends. If you saw the video that we did on Dirty Fest, it, it's your friends. When you're getting ready to go do something, what do you do? You call your friends. And, and the bikes, the BMX stuff, it's just the bond. And it's a blessing that we've been able to have these friends for so long. One of my good friends in BMX, Steve Crandall, he used to own FBM bikes. He, he and I talk regularly and, you know, he gave us the sign to hang up around here. And uh, it's something that we always try and remember. It's just part of the way BMX is. You keep your friends tight, you keep your program tight, and we keep moving forward. Anyways, this was probably too long of a story time for you guys. It was too long of a story time for me. I'm wandering. It's time to go to bed. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get some fun out of this. And I hope you have some sweet dreams as you go to sleep tonight and you dream about BMX and you dream about your buddies and you dream about riding. And uh, when you get up in the morning, you're ready to go do what you wanna do and go ride.